Welcome to this first video in a mini-series about atal spaces. So all that I want to do in this video, well I guess there are two things that I want to do in this video. First I want to kind of explain the way that I'm going to organize these videos. And second I want to kind of say what our first main goal in the mini-series is going to be. So those are the two things that I want to do in this video. So let's start with the organization. So in setting up these videos, I thought that I would do something different this time. What I'd like to do is organize the videos so that they have two structures, two kind of parallel structures going on at the same time. So the first structure is going to be a linear one. It'll start with the first video, namely this one. Which will lead to directly, well, which will lead directly to the second video, which will lead to the third video, the fourth, and so on. Apparently, the fifth. And what's going to go in this kind of mainline structure is a brisk treatment of what I think are the main ideas. So by brisk, I mean that this will kind of not uh, include a lot of details, um, and it'll be kind of fast. It'll kind of just present the main ideas. It'll present what I think are the most important things, but kind of just those. So basically, I'm going to cut out all of the details in order to give this kind of slick, uh, streamlined presentation. So that'll be the first structure. And as I said, I'll be cutting out the details for this guy. But I'm going to put them back in again. And that'll be the second structure. So the secondary structure will be a kind of, I don't know, a kind of cloud of um, detail videos, some sort of satellite complex of detail videos. Maybe this guy will be going to both. So I'll take the videos out of this green mainline structure, but I'm going to put them back in through this kind of cloud of details. And what's going to be in here? Well, some of the proofs might get relegated here. Some of the proofs will be relegated to the detail videos. Um, maybe some reminders, reminders of definitions or of theorems. Those will go in here. Some backlinking, perhaps, backlinking to earlier videos in the series. And then possibly another series. So. All right, the reason why I'm doing this, maybe I'll say these are the details. The reason why I'm doing this is kind of give some choice. So on one hand, if you kind of want just a streamlined presentation and you don't want to get bogged down in the details, that's available in this kind of green guy. So the details won't get in your way, you won't have to wade through tons of them and kind of in order to get at the meat of the theory. But on the other hand, you don't have to go without the details either. So you don't Maybe in the main line, you don't have to be weighed down by the details, but it isn't like they're absent. They're also there if you want or need them. So maybe the right way of saying this is that <laughs> you have details if and only if you want them. Um, yeah, and the way kind of mechanically that I'll do this is as I go along in the main line, at times where I would usually have to pause, at times where I usually would have to kind of stop and say, okay, well, let's go over this detail. At times when I usually have to say, you know, we have to remember this definition or we have to go through this proof, et cetera, et cetera. I won't, I'll just kind of keep going. What I'll do is link one of the detail videos at the relevant point. So, you know, when the proof that I decide not to do comes up, I'll basically just say, I'm not going to do this proof, let's uh, continue on to the next thing. But a link will pop up and say, but if you do want to see the proof, you can click here and you'll see it. And similarly, you know, I won't take the time to maybe recall certain definitions, but when those definitions come up, I'll sort of link to them so you can kind of see them if you'd like to. Yeah, so again, basically, I just wanted to structure this in a way that on one hand, the details don't get in your way, but on the other hand, you don't have to kind of live without them. All right, so that's the way that I'm going to structure these. So let me talk about the first main goal. So the first goal is to define two functors. Define the functors gamma and lambda. And maybe, well, maybe I'll say, and, and see some adjunctions adjunctions. 
and equivalences. So I can't go into too much detail about what this means yet, but maybe I'll tell you what the setup is without telling you anything about what's actually happening. So the setup is this. Let's let x be a topological space. And we have these two functors, so we had better come up with a couple of categories. And one category is going to be the category of spaces over x. Category of spaces over x. And the other category is going to be the category of presheaves. Presheaves of sets. So presheaves who take their values in the category of sets on x. Maybe I should just say briefly that this category over on the left here is sometimes denoted as the slice category of topological spaces over x. Okay, so we have these two categories, and we're going to have functors going in different directions. And if I remember correctly, this guy on top should be gamma. I always forget what the notation is. And this guy should be lambda. And yeah, I believe that's right. Okay. So we'll have these two functors. And this diagram is actually going to express an adjunction, which I mean that lambda is going to be the left adjoint of gamma. So our first goal is to kind of maybe define gamma and lambda, and then see that this is true. But I kind of want to say immediately that there's some, there's some more interesting stuff going on here. So we start out with this adjunction. And then let's see what happens on some subcategories. So we're going to define a subcategory of the category of spaces over x. And this will be the category of etale spaces, whatever those are, over x. Whatever they are, they form a subcategory of the category of spaces. And over here, we'll have a subcategory consisting of sheaves, sheaves of sets on x. And that'll be a subcategory of the category of presheaves. And gamma and lambda will play nicely with these inclusions, or with these subcategories, rather, in the sense that the diagram, as I've just drawn it, makes sense. If you start with an etale space and apply gamma, you'll actually get a sheaf of sets on x, rather than just some presheaf of sets. And dually, if you start with a sheaf, although actually it doesn't matter, I think, if I remember correctly, you can chuck in a pre-sheaf and it still works. But if you start with a sheaf of sets and apply lambda, you're going to get an etale space rather than just some random space over x. And furthermore, while we had an adjunction on up here, this is actually going to be an equivalence of categories. So that, I think, is where things start getting interesting. Well, maybe this is interesting, but it takes some work to kind of uh, squeeze some interesting stuff out of that. But this is immediately interesting, right? Because whenever we have an equivalence of categories, uh, nice things happen. We can port problems from about etale spaces over into problems about sheaves, and we can kind of take information, uh, categorical data in this category, and port it over into etale spaces. And we'll see that that has some practical applications. There are some constructions on sheaves which are kind of more naturally carried out uh, as constructions on etale spaces. And we'll see that. Well, maybe more naturally is the wrong term, because etale spaces, in my opinion, are kind of uh, weird, unnatural objects. So maybe I'll say the constructions are more natural. They're easier, though. Kind of the machinery is easier to work with once you have the adjunction, once you have the equivalence. So. I'm not sure if we'll get to this, but maybe I should mention that this rabbit hole does go a little bit deeper, just for people who are interested, which is that, well, as a subcategory of etale spaces even, we can define a further subcategory of covering spaces. Covering spaces over x. That'll be a further subcategory. And over here, we'll have a further subcategory of so-called locally constant sheaves of sets. On our space x. That'll be a subcategory. And again, these subcategories will play nicely with gamma and lambda in the sense that if you start with a 
covering space and apply gamma, you'll get a locally constant sheaf. And if you start with a locally constant sheaf and apply lambda, you'll get a covering space. And this guy was also going to be an equivalence. So maybe you know that there's some nice equivalence between, well, so under some mild conditions, um, there's a nice equivalence of categories between the category of covering spaces over X and a certain category of uh, group sets for the fundamental group of X. And one way of seeing it is using this equivalence of kind of taking that um, category of group sets and seeing why that's the same as the category of locally constant sheaves and then using this. Okay, so that's our first main goal is to kind of define these functors gamma and lambda and at least see these first couple of things. I'm not sure if I'll end up talking about the covering space stuff, but to at least see this part of the diagram. And we'll start on that in the next video.